Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the monthly reading for all, uh, sorry, the middle of the month love reading for all zodiac signs. This is going to be for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. When shuffling the deck, we have a few cards that flew out, and I felt very strong uh, pulled towards these cards. So um, I am going to read them and then put them back on the deck and reshuffle so that we can get uh, the messages. Now, this may not resonate with everyone, uh, but it is, uh, like I said, I felt very strong pull towards these cards, so I'm just going to read them um, as they show up. So we have the Seven of Swords, the Knight of Cups, the Four of Pentacles, uh, the Eight of Cups, the Queen of Cups, um, the Full Card, the Ace of Wands, the Devil, Six of Pentacles, and the Hierophant. So for some of you guys... Um, the message is very clear here. We have with the Seven of Swords, uh, there is some feeling of sneaky behavior going on in regards to a love situation, um, being very restricted or protective of your feelings or emotions, um, walking away from some type of situation, some love situation where perhaps there was some deceiving going on here. Uh, you could be dealing with water energy, uh, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces type of energy, or Earth energy, um, or an Aries. So Earth energy would be a Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, um, or an Aries, like I said. There was a desire to start something new, and the passion was running very high. Uh, but we do have the Devil here and the Six of Pentacles with the Hierophant. So you could have been dealing with the situation, um, dealing with someone that perhaps was in a committed relationship. Uh, for others of you, it could have been you, the one that was in a uh, some type of commitment, some type of committal relationship where there was a very strong pull towards a different individual, someone that was outside of the connection or outside of the relationship. And with the, with the fool, the ace of wands, and the devil card, uh, temptation was running very high. It could have been a very strong physical connection. Um, but there is definitely toxic energy here. Again, someone deceiving, someone trying to manipulate even through sexual acts. So it could be like using uh, your sexuality as a weapon or as some form of tactic or manipulation. And this could be you, Aquarius, or it could be the person that you were dealing with or currently are dealing with. Um, however, there is lack of um, there is lack of giving and taking here. It's almost like they continuously keep taking or expecting you to be open to their nonsense or to their bullshit. Um, perhaps making up excuses of why they're not wanting or willing to commit at this present point. For some of you guys, even dealing with a person that continuously keeps using um, their past as an excuse, as an anchor of this is why I am the way I am. This is why it's so hard for me to trust because, you know, I've been hurt in the past. I've been, you know, betrayed. And in reality, right off the gate here with the seven of swords, this is a manipulation tactic. So don't fall for that Aquarius if this is the type of energy that you're dealing with what they're telling you is you need to walk away from this um the full card is hopeful it's wanting to see the good or wanting or trying the best anyways to see the good in a person unfortunately it's like when do you get to the point of saying enough is enough or when do you get to the point of excusing continuously excusing people's behaviors just because we've been through a difficult situation doesn't give us the right to be a shitty person um so that's the overall message here so like I said, I'm going to put the deck back together and we're going to reshuffle. Um, if this resonates with you, take the messages for what they are. Okay, let's see. Spirit guides, what are the messages for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance? In regards to love and romance, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, let's get into your reading, Aquarius. So the first card here is the Seven of Pentacles and the Eight of Swords. Uh, this is an indication to me of wanting or still continuously dealing or being attached to the past. Uh, the Ace of Swords with the Four of Wands and the 
the Wheel of Fortune and the Five of Pentacles. So these are the cards that are representing you at the present time, Aquarius. And it's like I said, there is a feeling of being stuck to the past or being very difficult for you to move on from the past. It could be because when you're trying to move on, um, the person that is attached to your past or the person that you're trying to move away from uh, opens communication or all of a sudden they reach out to you and they make promises, promises that they know they cannot fulfill. With the Ace of Swords, you need to be completely honest and transparent with yourself. You got to be honest with yourself, Aquarius. If what you're wanting is to solidify and to strengthen a unionship or partnership, it's time for you to give, you know, basically give, um, flip the script. It's time for you to change the page, start a new chapter, stop holding on to the past because this is what's dragging you. Um, or actually, I should say this is what's keeping you from being able to move forward. The four of wands with the wheel of the year signifies the desire, the want at some point to stabilize something, but it's almost a feeling of when it's kind of like the energy of when you you're very picky and very difficult to pin down. But the moment you get emotionally attached to someone, it's very difficult for you to move on from. Um, so again, what they're telling you, it's time to, uh, you know, switch things up a bit. It's time for you to take a different route, um, not being closed off, but being open in general when we're talking about love and romance, um, because I feel that you're so guarded with the five of pentacles because you've been hurt in the past that you don't allow anyone to get closer to you or to get to know the real you Aquarius. And I feel that you have every right to be guarded, but I feel at the same time that the more you protect yourself, when you finally open up, it's like there's a feeling of always being left out in the cold or like they are taking advantage of your true intentions. But the reason for it, it's kind of like what the, what I'm hearing is I protect myself, yet when I open up, I always end up getting hurt. And what they're telling you here is the reason for that is because you're extremely guarded. Um, whereas if you were to be a little bit more open or perhaps be a little bit more willing to allow people to get close to you, um, you would be able to use better discernment in choosing the person based on their character. Um, so again, there is a need for you to be more open instead of taking the route of being extremely guarded and still choosing the wrong person. Now, the person that you're dealing with or that uh, is of your interest, we have the Seven of Wands here, the Sun and the Tower card with the Page of Wands and the Three of Wands and the Death card. So what they're saying here is with the Seven of Wands, there was a desire or a need to stand their ground. Um, and this could be how they're viewing you, like extremely guarded, um, very difficult to be able to read. They do desire to create some type of connection with you here with the sun card, but the tower can also represent having the need to change the overall perspective when it comes to love and romance, the way you view it, um, because it's almost like they're trying to get to know you, um, but I feel that they get frustrated or they feel like they don't really get much in return from you. So there is a desire or the temptation, should I walk away or should I continue putting effort in this connection? With the Three of Wands, it could indicate um, distance or it can indicate that there's currently not much communication, but communication will open up here with the Page of Wands. You also do have the Death card. So it's about transformation. It's a new beginning, um, like I said, a new cycle that, it, that you need to embrace. Uh, with the Sun and the Tower, there is unforeseen or um, I should say unexpected, not so much unexpected because you're being told, um, but a bit of unexpected surprise when it, when we're talking about relationships and partnerships, but you need to fully embrace the ending of a cycle. And for some of you guys, this cycle could have been the past five years. For others of you, it could be the past seven years um, where there's been a bit of, you know, really moving on or trying to move on but not fully being able to move on it's time to embrace this ending or to embrace this new beginning this new way of viewing relationships so i hope this gives you guidance understanding and we'll see each other soon until then bye